Today, we're talking about Gypsy Rose, the story of Gypsy Rose. Happy endings are not just in fairy tales, they're real. This is a thing that I've been seeing that I didn't know about until I saw the memes. Do you have a favorite Lana song? I do, I do. I, I love um, Young and Beautiful. and everything else. It's a crazy, crazy deep story that you may have heard of. You probably, honestly, I live under a rock like Patrick from SpongeBob SquarePant and Bikini Bottom, all right? <laughs> Do you know who Gypsy Rose Blanchard is? Do you think 10 years in jail is better than 10 years of living the way that you had to live? Yes, it is. And you start over like I'm newly born. If not, it's okay. I was unfamiliar, but many are familiar to this woman now. There's a TV show. She was recently released from prison. I will be released on Thursday, December 28th. And she has garnered a lot of media attention over the last couple weeks. With the woman now free from her bonds, we are going to learn the exact story of what really happened to her and why there are so many thirst traps of her that I keep seeing. Whose idea was it to kill your mother? Mine. This story is horrifying, by the way, and I'm sure there's probably, you know, responsibly, I, I should put some, like, trigger warnings and stuff. There's a reason there's there, there's all this media attention and, and attraction to it. It's, it's a wild, horrifying story. It's very sad as well. First, we will talk about Munchausen's by proxy. You may have heard the word Munchausen's thrown around on the internet. A lot of people who don't know anything about really anything at all talk about Munchausen's. It was named after an 18th century German officer who was well known for embellishing and exaggerating stories about himself, stories about his experiences and his life. It has come to be associated with someone who falsifies, induces or exaggerates illnesses and physical conditions, usually in order to gain attention. Munchausen syndrome, according to the National Institute of Health, occurs in less than 1% of individuals that are tested. It's about 7 in 100,000 people that are diagnosed with Munchausen syndrome. An individual with Munchausen syndrome, according to the Cleveland Clinic, will try to get attention and sympathy by falsifying, inducing, or exaggerating illnesses. We all know somebody that's like that. We all, everybody knows a guy who's always sick or something and, and, Usually they don't have, they're a single child, usually. They don't have Munchausen's, they're just bitches. People with actual Munchausen syndrome can lie about symptoms, sabotage medical tests, for example, put blood in their in their urine tests, or they can even harm themselves to acquire symptoms. Because of these things, Munchausen syndrome also has another name, facetious disorder imposed on self, which seems kind of rude. It's kind of a mean name to give to a disease or syndrome that people have. Seven people out of 100,000 that are actually diagnosed. That's not all though. Folks, Munchausen syndrome also takes on another form that is called Munchausen by proxy or facetious disorder imposed on another. It's essentially the same thing, but instead of you doing it to yourself, you're doing it to someone else. Munchausen by proxy involves a caregiver who either feigns or actually induces illness in her children and her goal is some kind of emotional gratification. So Munchausen by proxy is Munchausen syndrome, but worse because it's a person directing this syndrome on someone that they have generally power or control over. It's usually a parent or a caregiver and it's usually towards a child. It is seen as a form of child abuse and there is no case of facetious disorder imposed on another that has hit the mainstream quite like the case of Gypsy Rose Blanchard and her mother. At the beginning it looks like a tabloid case. It looks like Here's some people in some weird outfits and they're pretending to be disabled and they're scamming everybody. And then there's this like sort of horrible murder and the Facebook status that bitch is dead. Like all of it is very tabloid. Gypsy suffered from Munchausen by proxy at the hands of her own mother with the help of her mother's boyfriend. And Gypsy was freed from this entire thing at the cost of her own mother's life. So that's a little bit of a primer as to what the sort of overarching tone of this is. It's bad, it's not good. The Blanchards lived in the college town of Sp Springfield, Missouri, and they were actually known for the serious chronic illness that the daughter of the Blanchard family suffered from, which ranged from hearing and vision impairments to leukemia to many, many, many more things in between all of that. She had leukemia and she was having seizures and she had to be tube fed. The family originally moved to Missouri to a town called Aurora just outside of Springfield and they immediately fell in love with the town. It didn't take a lot to convince Dee Dee and her daughter Gypsy Rose to make a new home in Aurora. They already knew it was meant to be. It is the perfect town. 
the perfect place. And the town fell in love with them. There was immediate community support that was overwhelming. There were a ton of donations from locals that were raised by St. John's Hospital that were all put to good use. It was a facade that translated online. Donations pouring in for Gypsy's reported muscular dystrophy and leukemia. And they were even able to take a St. John's owned house and make it a home for Dee Dee and Gypsy Rose. After arranging a helicopter ride from Louisiana to St. John's Hospital, the process began to find them a permanent home. It turns out St. John's already owned this house, and with the help of local donations, it was turned into a home. I think that's just kind of what we're all about. You know, we're all about doing what we can to help people in our bad situation. There were updates, renovations. It was pretty cool. The whole thing was really unique. This was a home that they created memories in, and from all appearances, it appeared full of love and happiness. Hello, everybody. This is Gypsy Rose reporting from Aurora, Missouri. I am about to dive off our porch into the pile of snow. You ready? <laughs> However, since I'm making this video, you can tell that the truth was much darker than it appeared. So the stage is set, and Gypsy Rose has all these chronic illnesses that everyone in her town is rallying around her to help help fight. But the many chronic illnesses that Gypsy suffered from were brought on by the treatments that were given to her by her mother, not from actually having these illnesses before the treatments began. This is the full list of conditions that Dee Dee gave to doctors. Epilepsy, vision impaired, hearing impaired, GI reflux, quadriplegia, muscular dystrophy, anemia, hypoventilation, asthma, allergies, mild mental retardation, leukemia, incontinence, lung disease, and heart mummer. Now, I don't want to be rude, but a lot of that is misspelled, and I'm gonna be honest, it bothered me a lot. A look into the medicine cabinet paints a disgusting and grim picture of just how many drugs were quite literally being forced into Gypsy from her whole life, basically. I was on breathing medication, medication for seizures, medication to help go to the bathroom, pain medication anxiety medication, just everything. There's an interview with Gypsy, and at one point she's recounting her various treatments, and she she talks about the CPAP machine she was forced to use that she hated because it made her breathing worse. I would have to put on the breathing machine every night. I hated it, though, because it seemed to make my breathing worse, not better. Someone who's supposed to have your best interests at heart your whole life just deceiving everyone, including you, keeping you sick and poisoning you for years. And Gypsy, obviously as a child, blindly trusted her mom and did what Dee Dee told her to do. Gypsy even actively lied about her ability to walk to strangers and people simply because she looked up to her mother and that's what she wished she would do. Did you always know you could walk if you wanted to? Yes. She told you you had to stay in a wheelchair when you could walk. How did she convince you to do that? I was so young, so me looking up to her so much and just believing that she knows best. I didn't question it. It's important to note as well that Gypsy had no autonomy. Dee Dee had full control of her physical body. In fact, along the journey, Gypsy had a feeding tube put in and Dee Dee could just put whatever she wanted in there and wreak havoc on Gypsy. I really wouldn't even have to be awake so she could put whatever in my body and I wouldn't even know. Munchausen by proxy is what the mother was afflicted with. And the main element of Munchausen in general is things that are done for attention. Dee Dee succeeded massively, as you can tell. Now, whether or not attention was the primary motivation and the result of this Munchausen by proxy, we're not 100% sure and we can never know for certain. She definitely got a lot of attention, that's for sure. The family got medical airlifts, Disney travel, and free housing over the years because of Gypsy's supposed disabilities. We even saw a news report covering the miraculous story of the Blanchard family moving from Louisiana Louisiana to Missouri after Hurricane Katrina. It took something like a hurricane to make us have a happy ending. Dee Dee was happy enough just having medical care for Gypsy. She says she never expected this. It's amazing. It's amazing the outpouring of love and support. But this story is just the tip of the iceberg, man. They would go to conferences. Gypsy would be a highlighted individual for the trials and tribulations she's fought for years. She even sang for hundreds of people with her mom right next to her there on stage. How strange. <laughs> so disturbing. Another really strange thing is the fact that Dee Dee didn't even want Gypsy to know how old she was. That's right. Dee Dee didn't want Gypsy to know how old Gypsy was. We have not confirmed the age of Gypsy. It appears that there is several date of births that have been used over a period of time. In an interview with Gypsy's father, Rod, he recounted calling her for her 18th birthday and Dee Dee didn't want him to tell her that she was 18 years old. I called her for her 18th birthday and Dee Dee said, don't tell her she's 18, you know, she, 
I'm like, what do you mean don't tell her she's 18? She doesn't know she's 18. It's her 18th birthday. Ah, well, she, she don't know she's 18. She, you know, I thought it was weird. You know, I, she, all, I mean, I always did know that she, she told me her mental capacity was, you know, like five years behind. You know, when she was like 15, she was like, oh, yeah, you know, her le learning is coming along, but she's like, you know, mentally at, at like a nine or 10 year old. Also, Gypsy didn't have a birth certificate. Dee Dee claimed that it was destroyed in Hurricane Katrina. Me and my mother are Hurricane Katrina survivors. Okay. And, um, my birth certificate was washed away in Katrina. Okay. And, um, unfortunately, uh, they messed up, a lot of times they messed up the paperwork. Which she then fabricated a new one to make Gypsy seem younger than she actually was. And Gypsy Rose herself believed that she was younger than she actually was, speaking like a child during her court case. And what is Ms. Blanchard's current address? Wait, tell them your address. 2103 West Volunteer Way. Springfield, Missouri, 65803. I mean, you can't make this shit up. No, no one could have invented this in their fucking wildest dreams. The actual way that this turned out in reality, it's it's unbelievable. From where we are now, it seems like just only a matter of time before the powder keg blew, and eventually word was going to come out, and the whole fabrication from Dee Dee was going to come crashing down. It almost did in 2009. According to an article from 2015 in Springfield News Leader, five years before Dee Dee was murdered back in 2009, an anonymous individual called the authorities with concerns that things didn't seem right or they weren't what they seemed. So someone actually called the authorities and said that Gypsy was not sick and might be in danger. The person who called authorities in 2009 is not named in the report, but that person told deputies he or she had checked on Gypsy and could not find any symptoms that would support what Dee Dee alleges to be wrong with her daughter. Authorities also followed up on this report, but nothing was ever done and obviously nothing ever came to it and it was a massive failure all around that ended with Dee Dee being murdered in 2015. The unnamed caller told deputies that Gypsy had inconsistent birth dates and lacked a medical diagnosis. The caller wanted Gypsy checked on to make sure she was not an endangered runaway or missing juvenile, according to the report. And this is what Dee Dee's response to this was. Dee Dee told the deputy that she was divorced and she had changed her daughter's information so that her ex-husband would not be able to find them. Dee Dee told the deputy that she was afraid of her ex-husband. She was blaming it on her ex-husband. Another part of this report details an instance in 2010 in which Dee Dee assaulted a pizza delivery driver. It says that Dee Dee grabbed a Domino's pizza delivery driver by the collar after the driver refused to accept a gift certificate from an out-of-state franchise. Wow. What an unstable person. Give me my pizza! Just to get another red flag of instability and violence that ultimately we saw nothing come up. Also, who the fuck gets upset over pizza, dude? Come on. The driver decided to not press charges for some reason, and this wasn't the business's first time having issues with Dee Dee either. She's just an angry pizza woman. This is when things get to a bizarre, insane boiling point. I mentioned the powder keg earlier. She's about to blow. And it blows at the hands of Gypsy and with the help of her then boyfriend, Nicholas Goji. John. I want to basically let everyone know that I'm not just this cold killer that doesn't have any feelings or anything else like that. I'm I'm a human being. Gypsy would finally be freed from this nightmare, but it would be the result of murder. Nicholas Go to John was someone that Gypsy Blanchard met online. They began a online dating relationship. During the text, the two discussed Nicholas killing Claudine. This is crazy. This is a post from Gypsy herself that alerted neighbors and caused police to perform a wellness check on Dee Dee and everyone there. And, and after this, they found Dee Dee dead. It all started receiving a call on June 14th to check the well being uh, of a family. There was a Facebook post that was quite alarming. We were actually thinking that it was somebody that hacked into the Facebook and it wasn't actually a threat. As the sheriff, my primary responsibility at that time was really to ensure that her well-being uh, was okay. And this was another post. The second post indicated more than just murder, but also an R word on Gypsy. The police tracked the IP of the message that was sent, and when police arrived on scene, they found Gypsy was there as well of her own free will. There was money, disguises, wigs. This is all presumed to mean that they intended to flee and go into hiding. But first, they were going to post about it on social media or something. I'm not sure what the plan was. We took a Greyhound bus back to Wisconsin. My mind wasn't thinking back to what was at my house. 
I just kept thinking, I'm free, I'm free, and that excitement of being free and walking. I always referenced myself to this little bluebird that was trapped in an invisible cage, and I felt like this bluebird was set free. After the arrest, they were brought to the station. It was found that Gypsy could walk on her own. Seeing Gypsy Blanchard walk on her own two feet in a Wisconsin courtroom was a shock to friends and neighbors. Is she sick? I, I'm not, I don't know yet. We're trying walk. to figure that, figure that out. Um, yes. And a bunch of tests were done and everything unraveled. It was found out that everything was a massive sham. The ramps in her home, the claims from her mother saying she couldn't walk. It was all a ruse, a lie, everything. When the police investigated the home, they couldn't even nail down how many different types of medication there were Top because they were just the so fucking many. Full of so many medications. This isn't your ordinary medicine cabinet. It's Dee Dee's personal pharmacy. And everything was fake. Everything was false. Boom, the powder keg <laughs> explode. Oh, shit. That scared me. Frankie, you scared the fuck out of me. I didn't realize you were sitting right beside me. So the police were there with Gypsy and her boyfriend, and she was interviewed in a separate room, and she told them that she had no part in the murder. Did you kill your mom? No, no, sir. Did you help? No, sir. Nicholas kill your mom? No, sir. Did you have knowledge that Nicholas was going to kill your mom yes, sir. before he did it? Yes, she continues this in a phone call that she made to her father, which she says she's innocent and would never hurt her mama. Daddy, I understand that we haven't had a chance to get close in a long time, probably my whole life. I have a lot of questions, obviously. You know, I'm confused. The stuff you see in the news is horrible and not true. You know that I love my mama and you know that I would never... Yeah. Her, her. Just know that I'm innocent and know that I'm still your little girl. Then Nicholas is interviewed by the police and asked a few questions and he gives them all that they wanted to know. He even states that Gypsy herself asked him to murder her mom. Do you think that if, if Gypsy hadn't asked you to kill her mom, you'd ever killed her mom? I know I wouldn't have done it. Okay. You just did it because you love Gypsy and Gypsy asked you to do it. Yes. Is that what I'm thinking? Yes. Okay. Nicholas stated that he stabbed her randomly, but knows that he stabbed her exactly four times. Do you know how many times you stabbed her? Uh, four. You stabbed her four? Yeah, four times. Except in the autopsy report, it says 14 times. So that's like, you know, a little off there. He states as well that she screamed and yelled for help. Did she scream or holler? Or... Yeah, she did. What was she saying? First she said help, and then she didn't know, she didn't recognize who I was. And she okay. said, who are you? And then... She said, who are you? Yeah. Okay. And she didn't recognize who you are, and she says help, and then what does she say? And then she called up for Gypsy, but Gypsy didn't do anything. Gypsy, according to Nicholas, was hiding in the bathroom. When you were stabbing Dee in the bed, where was Gypsy at? She was uh, hiding in the uh, bathroom. And after all of this, Gypsy was incarcerated for eight years for second degree murder. How did you plead to the class A felony of murder in the second degree? Guilty. The court finds that there is a factual basis for a plea of guilty. The court accepts the defendant's plea of guilty and finds the defendant guilty thereof beyond a reasonable doubt. She's to be sentenced to 10 years in the Missouri Department of Corrections. She'll have to do 85% of her sentence before she's eligible for parole. So then in 2018, there was a trial. We found out more information. Apparently the original post that was made, it seemed like Nicholas made the post, but Gypsy actually made the post and it came out that she was manipulating the police at the time into believing that Nicholas said the stuff instead of herself. Who made that post? I did. Did you make that post pretending to be somebody else? Yes. And who were you pretending to be? Yeah. The outcome of this trial in 2018 got Nicholas life in prison and helped explain on the record almost everything that went down was indeed Nicholas' fault. After closing statements, the jury deliberated for just over two hours on the fate of Nicholas Godijan. We, the jury, find the defendant Nicholas Godijan guilty of murder in the first degree. Then a year after this case in 2019, a mini series was created about the story of Gypsy and her mother called The Act. This is the state's case against Gypsy Rose Blanchard. She's got paraplegia, epilepsy, heart murmurs, and she's allergic to sugar. It's not something I'm jumping out of my seat to go see, to be honest. I didn't even know it existed until we did research for this video. Everything I do, I do for her. My mom is my best friend. All she wants to do is keep me safe. Gypsy! Have you been able to confirm the girl's medical history? Which part? 
any of it. I don't really think the super dramatized retelling of the, the horror that Gypsy faced at the hands of her own mother is super necessary. Funnily enough, since Gypsy has been released recently, Joey King, who played Gypsy in the show, has voiced happiness at Gypsy's freedom. Obviously, you've seen that Gypsy Rose is, is out. Have you had a chance to speak to her at all? What do you perceive of her new fame? Are you happy for her? I'm so happy that she's released. I'm so happy for her. She deserves freedom. But I'm not sure if Gypsy is exactly the largest fan uh, or the biggest fan in the world because she recently said in an interview that she won't be watching the act, seeing as the fact she lived it. Have you or will you watch the act that Patricia Arquette, Joey King portray you, your mother? Have you seen it yet? I have not watched the act, no. Do you um, plan on it? I don't plan on watching Why? it. Um, I lived it. There was also a movie that came out in 2020 that I actually saw called Run. It's a psychological horror movie. It seems like it's like loosely based. It's this daughter. She gets fed a bunch of terrible stuff and she's abused. It's a like Munchausen by proxy. It's, it's crazy. Will she be okay? So here we are now in December of 2023, December 28th specifically, Gypsy was released from prison after spending eight years in the pen. She got her husband to pick her up, Ryan Anderson. She was interviewed before her release. You can see how excited she is. I've been incarcerated for eight and a half years. I will be released on Thursday, December 28th. I've been kind of packing things in my room, and it's kind of funny because I started packing like two years ago. She seems ready to move on about her past and talk about the future. I think that I've outgrown this prison version of myself that I think a lot of people have come to associate me with. I think what I'm really searching for in my life is a purpose for my life. I am so sick and tired of talking about my past. I am ready to talk about the future and what's ahead. And by God, what a fucking culture shock. The people are obsessed with Gypsy Rose on TikTok. There are fucking fan edits. Gypsy! There are so many fan edits. People are obsessed with her in the comments. This has to be unbelievable and strange. What a crazy world she lives in right now. There's also disturbing conspiracy theories that people are posting about her husband looking like her mother, which is so fucked up. This fan edit has 32 million views. She appears rehabilitated. No more murder on the horizon. And by the way, that video has some of the most fucking liked comments I've ever seen, ever. It's a bit odd to me how quick people are to trust her life and constantly be judge and jury with her decisions and just think she's perfect and awesome. Like everyone loves her, which is fine, right? She She's like the, the hero in the story, but you know, it's never always what it seems. There's always, she's just a person, right? She was just a person who had the very shitty end of a stick that no one should ever have to deal with. There's even an old interview that shows she was cheating on her husband while she was still in prison. She's just a person. I mean, you know, it's crazy. She told me that that was her final goodbye. And of course, I'm like, yeah, but you said that before. Do I worry? Yes. But at the same time, I don't. It's hard to explain because I trust her. You know, it, it might take her a week to tell me, but she'll tell me. I think Gypsy uses tests like that conversation with Ken to make sure that I'm going to stay around because she is scared that people will, like, that I will abandon her. After that, people are just speculating that instead of them having a perfect relationship after pr prison, she's cheating and manipulating and he's there for the clout, not there for the love. I don't know. It's fucking parasocial, weird fucking nonsense. She even has her own TikTok account. She almost is at 10 million now. She's probably at 10 million now at the time of this going up. She just posts herself doing fun things. Quite frankly, I love this, dude. Hey, me. So we bought tickets to Harry Potter and the Cursed Child on Broadway. So anyways, Gypsy Rose was the victim of Munchausen by proxy and it is an absolutely wild, wild story that you couldn't really make up even if you tried, if you were a, a depraved psychopath, like someone like Stephen King. He could write that shit. I don't fucking know. What do you guys think though? Do you like Gypsy? You pro Gypsy? I'm pro Gypsy. I think I like Gypsy. She seems like an innocent, nice person. She's gotta be excited to live her life for the first time ever. Fuck that bitch, Dee Dee.